I'm Kento Bento. This video is made possible by CuriosityStream. By signing up at the link in the description, you'll also get Nebula for free, a second video streaming platform where you can watch my very first Nebula original show, The Shocking Chinese Pork Bun Murders. Daejeon, South Korea, 2019, 140 kilometers south of Seoul. The bank robber was getting ready to enter the bank. He was well prepared, composed, and not at all afraid of being caught. You see, he had been planning the heist for a while and had become quite familiar with the bank's habits and procedures. He had done the math and knew it would take police just four minutes to arrive at the scene, once alerted. This, of course, wasn't ideal. A potential four minute window seemed risky. But if all were to go according to plan, well, the reward would be worth it. He would be set for life. As part of his preparation, he had procured a very specific weapon, a kind of knife, from a trusty vendor, which, really, he had no intention of using. With the threat alone being sufficient enough, this was merely for show. And so, after months of planning, it was time. He headed through the doorway into the bank. The heist was on. As he walked past customers and staff members, his hand firmly on the knife, he knew there was no turning back. Arriving at the nearest counter, he pulled out a note and handed it over to the teller. He had prepared this earlier. He politely informed her that no one would be hurt as long as she gave him what he wanted, as long as she followed precisely his instructions. The teller was stunned at the situation and bewildered at his oddly polite demeanor. But upon seeing the knife, she did what she was told. Now, time was ticking. At this point, he could only wait. But it wasn't long until customers started noticing his behavior. They saw his knife and became alarmed, as they had no idea what he was capable of. And so, with each passing moment, the situation grew increasingly on edge. And then it happened. The police had arrived. Now, it had only been no more than four minutes since the robber entered the bank which meant whoever alerted the cops must have done so the moment he handed the note. But who was it? And how exactly did it happen? Indeed, the robber's fate seemed ill-fated from the start. With the police now surrounding the vicinity, there was little he could do but face them. They ordered him to stand down and to drop the knife. But as officers came closer, they began to notice something odd about the situation. They began to notice his demeanor, his actions, his knife. <gasps> you see, the knife wasn't real, it was fake. With that, the officers quickly restrained him and handcuffed him, arresting him on the spot. Everyone was left baffled. Now, with the scene secured and the robber in custody, the officer in charge began the requisite task of interviewing witnesses. As he questioned customers and staff members though, it soon became clear that something wasn't adding up. Throughout the incident, the robber remained calm and composed, and even as the cop showed up, it didn't seem to elicit much of a reaction from him. But the most bizarre piece of information came from the teller, who, after being questioned, revealed that she was in fact the one who alerted the police. Now this perhaps wasn't too surprising, considering she was likely the first to be made aware of the situation. But the thing is, this wasn't all she revealed. Because as she continued, it soon became clear that the assailant wasn't who he appeared to be. This wasn't an ordinary bank heist. In fact, as it turns out, this wasn't a bank heist at all. Going back as the robber entered the bank, he had a very specific plan in mind, one that involved getting in and out smoothly, as fast as possible. And that meant informing the teller that no one would be hurt as long as she followed precisely his instructions. Which was to call the police. You see, he was never afraid of being caught because he was trying to get caught. The teller was of course stunned at the situation. It was odd and bewildered at his polite demeanor. But upon seeing the knife, she did what she was told. At this point, time was ticking, but apparently not fast enough, 
because the longer it took for the police to arrive and for him to be arrested, the likelier things could have gone sideways, tensions were mounting. It's no surprise that of all the banks he could have picked, he ended up robbing the one closest to the police station, just a four minute window. Still, not ideal, as a quicker capture might have been preferable. But if all were to go according to plan, the reward would be worth it. But if not cash, what was it? Now, as the sirens blared and the lights flashed, he was relieved, because the police had arrived. It had only been no more than four minutes since he entered the bank, thanks to the teller. As expected, the police ordered him to stand down and to drop the knife. But there was little to be concerned about, as he had no intention of hurting anyone. Yes, he had a knife. Well, kinda, which he had purchased from a trusty vendor. But it was a toy knife, merely for show. With the officers now realizing he was unarmed, he was quickly restrained and handcuffed. Upon questioning, the teller went on to reveal all that had transpired. This was seemingly what the robber had wanted all along. But why? What was this all about? Now, the officer in charge was determined to find this out. And so he sat him down for an interrogation. He wanted answers. What's with the note? The fake knife? The fake heist? Why did he want to get caught? The robber was reluctant to give any clear answers, but it did seem as though he really wanted to be sent to prison, almost fearful if it weren't to happen. Regardless, the officer kept going, pressing on with increasing pressure, until finally, he broke. What unraveled was an unbelievable explanation. The man revealed that he had a problem to solve, and that the bank heist was the only way to achieve this. You see, he, who we shall name Jong, was recently fired from his job, and it was devastating. He tried finding work elsewhere, but was constantly rejected. Unemployment in South Korea had risen sharply over the years, even before the current pandemic, and Jong had found himself a casualty. Right, so, okay, this seems to explain why he wanted to rob the bank. He lost his job and needed the funds. But then, why get caught? Well, Jong continued. He says it wasn't the money he was after. He's certainly not a criminal. He was raised better than that, but his options were limited. After losing his job, he was now home constantly. And as an unemployed middle-aged man, who, yes, still lived with his mom, his situation was increasingly desperate. And especially so with his worsening chronic back pain, which he was now unable to seek medical treatment for due to his financial situation. South Korea's high unemployment meant a great strain on their healthcare, and Jong could not get the approval he needed. His insurance wouldn't cover it. He was in tremendous pain all the time, and he was fast reaching his limit. And so with no options left, and possibly not wanting to further burden his poor old mom, he felt there was only one place he could get help. Only one place he could get free medical care. A prison infirmary. This is where inmates go to receive medical treatment. Now, in South Korea, the government does provide universal healthcare coverage for its citizens in general, but the South Korean system tends to be highly reliant on private providers, with patients often paying substantial amounts out of pocket. As a result, and this isn't unique to South Korea, prison can often be the first place where people go to receive proper medical care, as they simply can't afford it on the outside. And this was Jong's thinking. A prison infirmary, or a prison hospital, along with a prisoner's right to healthcare, was where he could finally get relief, continued relief, for his back pain. Yes, the act of the heist, the subsequent imprisonment, was not ideal. But you see, if all were to go according to plan, the reward would be worth it. He would be set for life. Or at least, that was his belief. And so with unwavering determination, he set his genius plan into motion. The heist was on. Wow. Well, that was unique. The officer couldn't believe it. The sheer absurdity. All this for back pain. Now, he'd heard of some ridiculous attempts at bank heists before, but this was on another level. Unlike previous incidents, this wasn't about evading or escaping prison. No, this was about wholeheartedly trying to get into prison. But well, at least John could now sit back and relax as he's convicted and transported to the nearest correctional facility. Right? Well, unfortunately, Jong wasn't too bright, and his confession meant police in Daejeon were only able to charge him with intimidation. He stole no money, he hurt nobody, and there was no intent, which meant no prison time. And so it wasn't long until Jong found himself back at home with mummy. Bad back and all. Once again, a free man. Wondering 
where it all went wrong. Of course, he was still broke and unemployed, but with, well, perhaps a fresh start and some hard work, his luck could change. Now, this was at the end of 2019, just in time for the brand new year. So it's been a while, but I hope you liked this video. If you're interested, the Nebula version of this video has a pretty cool post-credit outro and an extended discussion where I go over what the heck happened to Kento Pento the past nine months. Of course, Nebula is also where you can find my very first original, a Nebula exclusive, The Shocking Chinese Pork Bun Murders, a story so horrifying, so bizarre, it has haunted the residents of Hong Kong and Macau to this very day. It's about temptation and greed, murder, and pork buns, and as you'll see, things are never as they seem. You can say it's somewhat Halloween inspired, and well, if you're wondering why it can't be on YouTube, well, that's because no sponsor would sponsor it due to the terrifyingly creepy subject matter, and even if I did upload it here, YouTube would likely demonetize it, which is how and why it ended up on Nebula. Of course, Nebula is a streaming platform you can get for free as part of a special deal if you sign up to CuriosityStream in the link below. That's two different streaming platforms you can get as part of a bundled deal. Now, while most of you already know what CuriosityStream is, a subscription streaming service with thousands of high-budget documentaries and non-fiction titles, Nebula is a different beast. It's a streaming platform too, but created by a group of smaller independent creators like myself, Kento Bento, Wendover Productions, Legal Eagle, Cinema Wins, Polymatter, Mustard, and Real Life Lore. The project is self-funded, not backed by investors, and we've managed to make this largely ad-free and with no dreaded algorithm. We started Nebula so we could have a place to try out new content ideas that might not work on YouTube, stuff that would likely get demonetized like my Nebula original, as well as fun collaborative projects like Tom Scott's Money. It's still early stages for us, but if you want to experience and be part of helping us build this unique platform, Nebula, well, it's now made easier thanks to CuriosityStream. This is where they come into play. CuriosityStream wants to help us grow our platform and are offering all Kento Bento viewers free access to Nebula when you sign up at curiositystream.com slash Kento Bento. Of course, by signing up for CuriosityStream alone, you'll get access to thousands of the world's top documentaries like the Mona Lisa mystery, the great train robbery, Japan's Rent a Family Incorporated, yes, that's a thing, and many more. So unlimited access to both CuriosityStream and Nebula is for a very reasonable $2.99 a month. And even better, by entering the promo code KentoBento or by clicking the link below, you can get 26% off their annual plan, which is less than $15 a year. I'm not kidding, less than $15 a year. That's pretty much the best deal in streaming. So CuriosityStream and Nebula, it's a great way to support this channel and educational content directly. So please give it a try. Anyway, it's good to be back. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again in the next one.